Once upon a time, movie theaters were blessed with a coming-of-age tale that hardly anybody saw. It's about learning how to deal with all this scary stuff in our grown-up world, and that the best way to succeed in this frightful place that we call life is to do it with your squad. Your monster squad. And together, we can uncover the mysteries of life, discover who we're meant to be, stand up for what is right, and when you have done all of that, you can truly understand that it is a fact that Wolfman's got nards. That infamous line is so much more than just a hilarious werewolf testicle joke. Wolfman's got nards? It's a symbolic battle cry that represents overcoming obstacles through the power of friendship. And I don't think cinema has ever been able to teach us a better lesson than letting us know that Wolfman's got nards. Which, like, of course he does. Wolves have nards and men have nards, so wolf men are gonna have nards. But that's the beauty of this. He, he, these, these questions, they're so innocent. <laughs> Children around the world could find a character that they related to in this motley crew of monster-loving misfits in this cult classic horror comedy called The Monster Squad. So yeah, in movie math language, we would say it's the little rascals plus the goonies minus pirates plus classic movie monsters multiplied by a screenplay by Shane Black to the square root of Night of the Creeps director Fred Decker divided by the politically incorrect charm that is 80s cinema. And that equals the Monster Squad. See you later, Band-Aid breath. This film is the perfect introduction to the horror genre, doing what that misguided dark universe was never able to do. It created a fan base so dedicated that friendships would form just for knowing that this film existed. It was like, you know what Monster Squad is? Let's be friends. Unfortunately, many don't know about these unsung heroes of the Monster Squad and how they saved us all from evil. It was a massive box office flop, losing millions of buckaroos. Should we blame the horrible marketing? Should we blame the Lost Boys, which came out right before this? Should we blame the PG-13 rating, which confused many on who the target audience was for this flick? Or should we blame society? for not being ready for this mega monster mash of a movie. This squad was just ahead of its time. I think director Fred Decker said it best. It's like shooting a basket and having it finally score decades later. But better late than never, this film finally rose from the dead like the creatures it features in this creature feature, which were designed by the late great Stan Winston and his talented team. <laughs> Then one day it seemed like this movie just vanished. Many thought that this film just existed in their imagination, like they made it up in a cinematic fever dream. The Monster Squad was dead and forgotten. The kids from this movie seemed to have vanished as well. So yeah, let's find out what the f happened to the Monster Squad kids. <laughs> But to truly understand what the f happened to the Monster Squad kids, we must begin at the beginning of the beginning began when they were all born on their birthdays, I, I'm assuming. But yeah, we gotta start somewhere, so let's start with the leader, because he's the leader. He even says so a few times in the movie, just so we understand that. Andre Gower. Andre would start acting when he was six years old. He quickly booked roles on soap operas like Days of Our Lives and The Young and the Restless. And he would show up on shows like Saint Elsewhere, The A-Team, and Knight Rider. One of the more interesting roles he would get would be as Elliot, Elliot, in the TV commercial for the E.T. Atari game. During a break in his busy TV schedule, Andre Gower would land the role of Sean, the Stephen King-loving leader of the Monster Squad. You know why we know he loves Stephen King? Because it says so on his shirt. This young actor, he played the role wonderfully. Being able to switch between the zany antics of the real-life monster sequences to the more emotional scenes, as he wonders what he can do to bring his parents back together. 
and stop the monsters. It's a large role for a young actor and he pulls it off. That cocky little smirk, look at him. He even gets to stake Dracula in the end. Right in the heart, yeah! Gower would take a break from acting when the 90s hit. He became an acting coach during this period to help younger actors who were entering in Hollywood or Holly Weird. Ugh. He would pick up a couple of roles in the early 2000s with Sweet Deadly Dreams and Vault of Darkness. Around this time, a screening of Monster Squad was set up in Austin, Texas, and the cast had been invited. They didn't think it was going to be much of an event, but went anyway. It was at this screening that the cast and crew learned that the movie had gained a giant cult following. The screening was sold out, and another one was added. Once the love of the Monster Squad was reignited, the cast and crew would make the comic book convention rounds. During this time, he would start moving into producing and directing. He would produce short ends for the Nerdist website. In 2018, he produced and directed the incredible documentary, Wolfman's Got Nards. And no, this is not a run-of-the-mill making of documentary. It would focus on the fandom of the film, the true heart and soul of the Monster Squad. He would interview a variety of fans and show off their Monster Squad collections and let them tell their Monster Squad stories. And boy, howdy, let me tell you what, this movie, it changed a lot of people's lives. It also chronicled himself going on tour with the movie. It was a great expression of the love that fans have for the Monster Squad and how much that legacy means to them. In July of 2021, Andre Gower would experience some real life horror when he collapsed during a game of tennis. He was rushed to the hospital where they found out that his right artery was 100% blocked. If they had gotten to the hospital 10 minutes later, he would have died. So now he has a pacemaker and has recovered. And according to his Instagram, his IG, the Grams, he's still busy going to signings and appearances and has some movies coming out. But yeah, seriously, check out the documentary Wolfman's Got Nards. It's basically doing everything that I'm doing with this episode, but more and better. <laughs> Next up is Robbie Kigger. Robbie got into acting very young. His mother got him small parts on multiple TV series like The Greatest American Hero, The A-Team, and One Day at a Time. He was also the hand model for the original poster for E.T. He eventually jumped into feature films. Robbie's big break came in 1984 with The Children of the Corn. He tried out for a lot of movies that have become staples of the 80s. During a three year period, he auditioned for Stand By Me, The Goonies, and The Lost Boys. During an interview, he said that if he had gotten one of those movies, his life would have turned out very different. Soon after he got a recurring role on the TV series Crazy Like a Fox, the show would wind up getting canceled in 1986, but wrap up with a TV movie in 1987. It was during this time that Robbie would book his role on the Monster Squad. Robbie and Andre were friends, and Andre recommended him for the movie. And he was hired because Fred Decker saw that he had great chemistry with Andre Gower. Because, you know, they were real life friends. Even beating out Seth Green for the part. His character's smart aleck attitude made him a fan favorite. And he delivers all of his lines so perfectly. Like the way he responds to his sister's news about it not counting. Acting and comedic timing, it doesn't get better than this right here. Steve, but he doesn't count! Doesn't count! When the Monster Squad was finally released in theaters, Robbie Kigger was actually in summer camp at that time. By the time he had gotten back, it had already been taken out of theaters. So he never heard much about it. And when he started school next year, no one seemed to know who he was. He was not a famous movie star. And he had no idea that it had been developing a cult following at the movie rental stores. Like the rest of the cast and crew, he also thought that everyone had forgotten about this film. But yeah, Robbie decided that he wanted to get out of acting after his next movie. Welcome home, Roxy Carmichael. Robbie left acting behind as he wanted to live a normal life for the rest of high school. He later said that this would be the biggest mistake he ever made. Now, Robbie thinks that he could have made a pretty good career for himself 
but at the time he was more interested in hanging out with his friends than being a movie star. He says that his other big regret from that time was that he felt like he and Andre Gower had a falling out. Apparently there was some sort of misunderstanding about being invited to a party. There was some betrayal, hearts were broken, it was a lot of drama, and unfortunately the friendship did not survive. Robbie Kicker would move to Maui to live with his dad after he graduated from high school. He would take on regular jobs, like normal people's, and you know the story, years later, he would hear about the resurgence of the Monster Squad, and has sadly not been able to take advantage of it like his peers. He does do the conventions and the autograph signing stuff on rare occasions, and Robbie seems to have a bizarre sense of humor. He seems to be a little, I don't know, unfocused, kind of all over the place. In an interview, he made a joke about getting evicted and having to pay the rent with his autograph money, and he said that he was joking, but it felt like behind that joke, there was some truth there about him going through some hard times. And if you did go through some hard times, and if you are going through some hard times, we here at the Joe Blow Movie Network and all of the fans of the Monster Squad, we wish you the best. What's a squad? It's like Miami Vice, I think. Now let's talk about Brent Chalem. Brent began working in TV with roles in shows such as Small Wonder and Punky Brewster. He would go on to play Horace in the Monster Squad. And his horrible on-the-nose nickname, Fat Kid, would endure him to audiences forever. He has the absolute best character arc out of everyone in the film. By the end, Fat Kid proves that he is the hero we all knew he could be, which represents the hero that's inside of all of us, all of us nerds. This character is a total badass, actually. He saves Sean's life by burning Dracula's face with a pizza covered in garlic. Then he would go on to defeat the Gill Man, and he did it all in front of those bullies, brother from the Wonder Years. Hey, fat kid. Good job. My name is Horace. When Monster Squad disappeared from theaters, Brent would return to guest roles on numerous TV shows. His last credit was as a Bat Boy in the pilot episode of the time travel series Quantum Leap. He left acting to concentrate on his schooling, and when he graduated from high school, he was an honor student. This was followed by him graduating from UC Berkeley with the intention to study law. At that time, he was working as a legal assistant for a law firm. Wolfman's got an art. Come on, come on! But Tragically, at the age of 22, Brent Chalem would pass away due to complications after receiving the wrong medication to treat pneumonia. All of the kid actors from the Monster Squad have lamented that out of all of them, Brent would have loved the cult following and the resurgence that the Monster Squad had gained the most. Brent had a great time making the film and often spoke of his very fond memories on the set. It would have brought him great joy to truly see how much the fans really loved his movie. The friends and family of Brent Chalem say that he lives on through the love that the people have for the Monster Squad. My name is Horace. Awesome. Now let's see what the little girl's up to, Ashley Bank. At a very young age, she landed a role on the TV series Cagney and Lacey. Three short years later, she was making the TV rounds and she was offered two different roles that she could choose from. One would be playing Michael Douglas's daughter in Fatal Attraction as he fought against a monstrous Glenn Close. The other would let her play with a bunch of kids as they fought against monsters. She thought that that sounded a lot more fun than Fatal Attraction, so she opted to join the Monster Squad. And when the monsters start showing up, she proves to be the bravest of them all by befriending Frankenstein, I mean Frankenstein's monster, who they call Frankenstein. Then when it comes time to send the monsters into limbo, she proves to be the only one who can save the entire world. And she proves to be one hell of a little actress. Oh my gosh, try not to cry while you watch her cry. 
And yes, she is more than worthy of joining this monster squad. Even though this door clearly says no girls, sexism. Ashley Banks says that she had a great time working on the movie, but didn't think much about it after it failed at the box office. It was just a fun little time and then she moved on. After that, she continued to work as an actress through the 90s with appearances in TV series like Fraser, The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, and Highway to Heaven. She took a break as she attended high school and college, attending New York University. She studied politics, journalism, and film, where she earned her bachelor's degree. Between 2003 and 2006, she worked as a broadcast assistant for CBS News. Ashley would provide post-production support and research for numerous TV channels. Yeah, she went on to make a career behind the scenes. She eventually became an instructor at the New York Film Academy. The rise of the Monster Squad as a cult favorite took her by surprise, as it did everyone else in the film. On a podcast interview, Ashley revealed that once in college she had been dating a guy for quite some time when he finally put together that she was Phoebe from the Monster Squad. He was like, oh my god, I'm dating the little girl from the Monster Squad, but uh, she's, she's not a little girl anymore. I'm sure he, he cleared that up. Come on, don't be chicken shit. Ashley seemed baffled that her boyfriend had actually seen the film. But it still wasn't until that Austin screening that she truly understood and learned how much people loved the movie. Ashley Bank would still pick up some acting roles here and there, but would mainly focus on her new career, being behind the scenes and teaching and being a mom. And along with most of her other Monster Squad castmates, Ashley would start to make those horror Comic-Con convention appearances, much to the delight of her fans everywhere. In the year 2018, she would join Andre Gower in the filming of the documentary Wolfman's Got Nards. During her sections, she is seen with Gower and Lambert as they trek across the country to appear at 17 Alamo draft houses to screen the Monster Squad in 17 days. Ashley had just had a baby and decided to bring her along the journey. It makes the whole experience quite enjoyable for viewers to see. This little girl now has a little girl. Now let's talk about Ryan Lambert. He got his start in an episode of the martial arts series Sidekicks. Ryan Lambert ended up mostly being known for his work on the kids show Kids Incorporated. When Ryan went to audition for the role of Rudy in the Monster Squad, he decided to just walk in with the Rudy attitude. He sat down in front of Fred Decker and the producers and asked them if they had a cigarette. These movie producers gave this young man a cigarette and he lit it up as he read for the audition. Decker said that he just gave off a cool vibe, which was exactly what Rudy needed. And yeah, this guy is just the coolest of cool. There's nothing more to say about him except cool. After Monster Squad, he showed up in a few TV shows, like Webster, It's Gary Shandling's Show, and in the TV movie Freeze Frame. He took a break from acting and moved to San Francisco, where he began to sing in bands, one called Kill Moi and Elephone. When he found out about the resurrection of the Monster Squad, he would pick up some more acting roles and would work alongside his good friend, Andre Gower, on the documentary Wolfman's Got Nards. And of course, Ryan can be found at those comic book convention things and all those special appearances celebrating the love of the Monster Squad. Noni virgin. Now let's talk about what the f happened to Michael Faustino. He had appeared in an episode of Matlock, and then jumped right over to losing his Twinkie to the Gill Man. Creature stole my Twinkie. If Michael's last name, Faustino, looks familiar, then you may know his older brother, David Faustino from Married with Children, which I'm sure all of you watch. Michael made five different appearances on the show throughout its long run. He would spend a lot of time bouncing around from one TV series to another, such as Alien Nation and Highway to Heaven. Michael would then land two notable movie roles, one in Hulk Hogan's Suburban Commando, and as the main character's older brother in Blank Check. He eventually decided to retire from acting, and not much is known about what he has done since, 
but his current social media page. It lists him as working on audio for the shows. The Voice, Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, Weakest Link, and Shark Tank. Another behind-the-scenes career, it seems. We could not track down any information on him making any Monster Squad appearances since its comeback, but we can always hope for one in the future. What do you say, Michael? Come on! Mommy came in my house. The Monster Squad may have failed at the box office, but whether or not you were able to see the film in theaters, as a video rental, when it played on HBO, or years later at the Alamo Drafthouse, it doesn't matter, you still fall in love with it every time, no matter what. When the internet took over the world and was in every household, fans of the movie were able to find each other and reminisce about their favorite parts. Through this, the Mighty Monster fandom was able to will a home media release on DVD and Blu-ray, finally allowing the monsters to come into our homes again. Like I said, the film is great if you saw it as a kid, and it's still great if you're seeing it for the first time as an adult, because it makes you feel like a kid. Like seriously, I only saw this just a few years ago, and as I was watching it, I was like, mother fucker, mother fucker, I wish I had seen this when I was a kid! What the fuck? But then I convinced myself to see the brighter side of things. My Twinkie was half full. I was like, wow, watching this makes me feel like a kid again. And only cinema really has the power to do that. Focus. Focus. The characters and the actors who brought them to life held a special place in your heart. Whether you were a Sean, who would lead your group of friends on adventures throughout your town, or you were a Phoebe, who hated being left out of the fun, but in reality, you were a badass. Or if you were like a super duper cool kid who smoked cigarettes. Or maybe you were a Horus, who had to deal with kids calling in names, but were loyal and could step up when all seemed lost. Or if you just liked to doodle in class. Or if you were a monster. Whoever you identified with, this movie would provide you a great sense of adventure. Horror, comedy, friendship and fun. And movies don't get better than that. And sometimes it takes a little bit longer for art to truly be appreciated. But when it finally is, it's a beautiful thing. So nobody should give a f about what the f happened to the Monster Squad kids. Because they're doing just fine.